Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love or something new to discover. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. I am currently listening to Drunkish by Stephanie Wilder-Taylor. I really like Stephanie. And this is a book about leaving alcohol. It's called A A Memoir of Loving and Leaving Alcohol. And I really dig her take on it. She's a funny person, and I love having her voice actually in my ear reading it to me. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. Sound the gifting panic alarm. You need to get an amazing gift. Wait, no, the perfect gift. And it needs to say, I'm a thoughtful person. And I appreciate you. And I know exactly what you like. All at the same time. Relax. Now you can use gift mode on Etsy. Gift Mode on Etsy is here to take the stress out of gifting, so you can find the perfect item for anyone and any occasion. It's easy to find gifts made by independent sellers for all the people in your life, like the pickleballer, the jazz fan, the zen seeker, the artist, or the pasta lover. From 90s nostalgia and mixology to reality TV and gaming, there's something for everyone on Etsy. A gifting moment is always around the corner, whether it's a birthday, an anniversary, a holiday, or even just a day to say thank you. Gift Mode on Etsy has you covered. Need to find the perfect gift? Don't panic. Gift easy with Gift Mode on Etsy. If you live in Boise, Chicago, D.C., Denver, Houston, Las Vegas, Madison, Philly, Pittsburgh, Portland, or Salt Lake, it can be hard to find out what's happening in your city. Like, really happening. But a new local podcast called CityCast makes it easy. CityCast is a daily local podcast that keeps you in the know about what's happening. Episodes are short, completely local, and all about your city. You'll always be in the know about what's happening in town, like which restaurants you just have to try, the events you need to attend, and you'll even hear about hot local stories and controversies. Listen to CityCast on any podcast streaming platform by searching City Space Cast and your city name. Hear what your city is talking about with CityCast. Hello and welcome to Watch Our Crap Ins, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker, and joining me is the one, the only, the winner of the Super Bowl, Mr. Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Hi, how are you? Doing so well. Congratulations on your victory last night in overtime against the, the 49ers. You just, you just did a great job out there. Hell like yeah, that's why I gave Taylor such a big old smooch at the end of it. Guys, <laughs> what happened with Taylor and Travis? You guys, why was she yelling at why did it look like she was having an uncomfortable conversation with the guy in charge of the NFL? And then why wasn't Travis hugging her hard enough? I need to know everything. Is Travis respecting Taylor? It doesn't matter why, because guess what? The whole thing was rigged anyway. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this much. ta ta team you ta ta team you Shop like a billionaire. <laughs> Yeah, it was a big night of Americana yesterday for the Super Bowl. Yeah, um, so of course anyone who watched the Super Bowl last night, who also listens to the show, probably thought about Ronnie. Because Ronnie is the one who introduced me personally to the fact that there was a website out there. A sketchy website called Temu. We would call it Timu, but it's actually Temu. And uh, then last night, I guess they had their big coming out to America because they booked about $40 million commercials during the telecast it was like every three minutes it's like shop like a billionaire and i was like this fucking song please make it stop and of course by the end of the night i was like every time i hit the bridge i was like shop like a billionaire 
Now, I Tender. did not watch the Super Bowl, not to rain on anyone's parade, because wow. I don't believe in cheering on brain damage, which I think that America does. I think America is like, yay, you know what? We're going to throw people into a ring. We're going to mush their brains, and we're going to pay them a few million dollars, and we're going to say it was all worth it, and then we're just going to ignore them once they become you know, abusers or murderers later on in life, which I think is what we do. Shame on us as a country. Shame. Shame on you guys for supporting all. Now... That said, of course, I'm still American, and people were texting me about this Timu ad. I would like to take credit for normalizing Timu before yeah. the Super Bowl. Because when I said Timu, everybody's like, oh, my God, Ronnie, murderer, murderer. And you're making yeah. me feel like a terrible person for going on this site and supporting identity theft or whatever the hell else you people have been yep. emailing me about. Listen, I support a legit company, as you might have seen in the new hit <laughs> music videos that came out last night called Timu. Timu. And meanwhile, I was skipping the brain damage fest that you guys are so proud of and taking part in every year. Are you really? And guess what I did while you were taking part of that? I was cuddling up with the comforter that I brought from Temu before it was cool. So suck it, people. And by that, I mean my comforter. When you say brain damage fest, does that include or not include uh, the stuff that we normally watch? Because <laughs> one could make an argument. So, uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. We are here. We're actually talking about the traitors. Um, and uh, but before we dive into that, we are now it's we're just a few days away. This is this is it. We are five days away from the Golden Crappies. Ronnie and I, we are like at a fever pitch of preparations. It's so exciting. Uh, you may have already seen on social media the people who are uh, announcing that they're going to be presenters at it. It's going to be great. We're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time. Please come. If you're here in Los Angeles, and if you still have that Temu song in your head, then come sing, <laughs> sing it with us. No guarantees that we'll actually sing it. Uh, it's February 17th at the Palace Theater, downtown LA. Uh, if you can't make it, Moment is going to be, is going to be streaming it. Um, and all the necessary links are going to be at watchwhatcrappens.com. Also, by the way, don't forget to vote. Voting is going to be open through Thursday. Some of these races are incredibly close, like tiny, tiny margins. It's a real showdown between in many of the categories. So uh, if you really want your voice heard in our award show, be sure to vote, and we're going to announce the winners on Saturday. So we're excited about that. Um, and then uh, today, by the way, Something that's relevant to both the traders and the Super Bowl is this. There's only one person, I think, in America who thinks that their personal life could actually rival the Super Bowl. And that person is the trader's very own Larsa Pippen. Larsa Pippen. Larsa Pippen like dropping hints like that she and Marcus have broken up like. Can you believe it? Oh my it, god, like, like oh my god, like I'm gonna post on my Instagram during the post the Super Bowl and be like so, guys, should your friends, like, delete your ex's number from their phone, like? Let's vote about it. <laughs> yeah, like, I said, I unfollowed Marcus, like, because I realized, like, that maybe, like, basketball, like, isn't where it's at. Maybe I should follow Taylor's lead and be, like, football, like. <laughs> where the real men are, like. I feel like, like, football's, like, manlier men. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, apparently... Larza and Marcus broke up. I can't believe it. Whose purse is he going to hold now? I mean, what's going to happen with our podcast? What's going to happen with separation anxiety? Now it's just going to be called separation. I mean, what this is or this anxiety. is America's podcast. <laughs> I like or have anxiety. like anxiety. Like it's like Marcus <laughs> left. Like my purse is on the ground right now. That's like so dangerous. Like I feel like it could like X Y Z get like stolen. I'm like doing this podcast alone, like, and it's just like weird, like, it's like this, that, and X, Y, Z, but what if there's no Z? It's just like this, that, and X, Y. Uh, yeah, um, really, really terrible time for us. God, speaking of brain damage, it really just keeps coming back to that, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, we'll see, because I feel like knowing Larsa, they probably got into a fight, and by the end of the week, they're going to be back together. So I'm going to just... We're gonna we'll be in a holding pattern on this one, but yeah, Larsa tr Larsa managed to to try to compete with the Super Bowl. She tried to compete with Taylor Swift. Let's be honest, and uh, I don't think it really worked. But here we are talking about it. So that was the big that was the hot traders news. It worked for a lot of people. Episode. I saw it all over the internet last night. You know, and the the internet's like the world's biggest TV screen. So yeah, I mean, she was definitely. I saw this 
she wasn't necessarily trending on Twitter, which I was I was sad for her about, but then today she was. And she was trending under the word hashtag rigged, which I think is hilarious. I don't know. I, I like the idea of like rigged and Larsa. I feel like if any, anything is rigged, it's Larsa. So that felt good. Just her entire personality. <laughs> her persona is rigged. <laughs> Larsa is just rigged in general. Yeah. <laughs> anything that happens with Larsa, that's rigged. That's rigged. Uh... Um, okay, let's get into the choices. Speaking of rigged, actually, I like how this just all came, kind of blends in together. Mm-hmm. We got brain damage with mm-hmm. everything we talked about before. Um, let's talk about being rigged. Now, this is obviously rigged, right? They pulled some big this brother on rigged. this shit where they saw that Peter the Bachelor was about to get sent home. Um, deservedly so. What a bozo. By the way, making himself the big uh, enemy of everybody. Like, what a bozo. So he was deservedly going to get banished. And then there's a magical fire ceremony to come save the whoever is going to get murdered. To save fucking Peter? Are you kidding me? You can't do that. Now, people are saying it's not rigged because they are copying everything from Traders UK. And Traders UK had this same thing happen on the exact same episode, which proves... That it was not. But then I heard that that was not for murder. They messed up the banishment, but not mm. the murder. So, you know, I don't know. I say listen, rigged. Listen, if um, if the powers that be can rig the Super Bowls, so that way Taylor Swift can advance her agenda. <laughs> the traitors can be rigged, too. No, uh, by the way, I do not believe that whatsoever. And I cannot believe there are people who seriously think that. I, I don't know if you heard that, Ronnie, but that's why the rigged was... was uh, that it was rigged for, so Taylor Swift would look better that her boyfriend won or what? No, it's that like um, Taylor Swift, it was like a... I believe it was viewed as an anti-MAGA rigging. Like Taylor Swift is like it was it's honestly it's so preposterous that it's ridiculous. But on a show like the no, Traders, I like, need to be explained. I need it to be. Explained. OK, so I think if I remember correctly, because I didn't read it very carefully, it's that I, I don't think that Taylor Swift is pro Donald Trump. And so I think if I remember that the conspiracy is that um, uh, it that Kansas City was going to win to advance Taylor Swift's anti Donald Trump agenda. So the entire oh, thing was rigged. Okay. In gravity and physics with balls and catching and et cetera. That was all rigged. So Well, listen, I'm a person who thinks everything is rigged. So sounds this, good to me. Let's get In it this case, I do actually I am suspicious that there was rigging here because I thought it was a curious timing. So Previously on the traitors, after losing four faithfuls to banishment, a traitor was finally caught by the faithful. The traitors are weakened, but beware, a predator is most dangerous when wounded. Uh, Murder, murder, I have a bangs. (laughs) That's all I hear from Alan coming. Murder, I'm dressed like a tuna caught in a web. In the ocean. Murder, murder. I'm the fourth, the fourth duck sibling, Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Alan. And murder. murder. <laughs> and murder. Huey, Dewey, and murder. Because he has um, the little ducktails thing in the front of it. His hair poking out is very ducktails, right? You know? Yeah. So where we left off was basically um, Dum Dum Dan got sent home. Because in this game. So he's out of here. <laughs> and now that leaves a Parvati and Phaedra. Phaedra. Alone as the murderers. So they meet up and they um, start talking. And then Alan interrupts him and he's like, you must pick another murderer. But whoever you pick means you can't murder somebody. So they pick Peter because Peter is on to them. And Parvati (laughs) famously is like, wouldn't it be great to get him together to murder his friends? (laughs) So that's where we left off. And guess what? They tried it. Now, you can't just seduce a bachelor. The bachelor is well-oiled and Mm. well-practiced at blowing off seductions. That's literally his job. That is true. That is true. And I I had a feeling this was going to fail because since Peter led the charge to get out a traitor, he is going to be like riding that high and he's going to now his like ego is going to be inflated and he's going to say, not only did I get out the traitor, now I can get out all the traitors and I've got people following me and he's going to be on some moralistic 
you know, journey that he is going to be the one to rat them all out. So I knew that when Parvati dangled it in front of him, I was like, he's not going to take it. He want, he, now he, he wants to be the one to say, no, I was faithful and I, and I found you guys out. It was, I think it was in her mind, it was a very fun, exciting move for like a TV show, but it was not a realistic one. And uh, she swung and she missed, which, you know, Phaedra is the one who is suffering from all these big swings. Dan swung and missed with Bergie, and now Parvati swung and missed with Peter, and Phaedra is the one that is, is going to be in the hot seat because of all this bullshit. But Phaedra is also not swinging. She is putting her, herself, she's putting herself in kind of a floater position where she's letting everybody else make these decisions where she can just yeah. turn around and blame them in the end, which I don't know that that's her motivation for doing it, but you know, they're, they're making the decisions. Now, I think she's doing it because she saw very early on that they're going to play against her, which they both did, not only in the beginning, but then again when Dan tried that shit again with her. So I think yeah. she's just patiently waiting for these two dum-dums to shoot themselves in the foot, which yeah. they're doing. They're doing pretty well. And she also knows that Parvati is completely fucked. And if Parvati tries it with her and she swings it back on Parvati, Parvati is going to be acting guilty because she is. She is guilty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Parvati, yeah, so by the way. By the way, I just want to say I read an interview with Parvati this week, and she explained the reason why she has so many headbands is because uh, she brought a wardrobe in that was going to be like a callback to Blair Waldorf from Gossip Girl. And so she's dressing sort of like Blair Waldorf because she wants to be a Blair Waldorf character. I, so there's that. <laughs> well, you know, this podcast um, loves a headband. And we built a whole like character around one girl's justice headband because she constantly oh, was striving for justice and would wear a justice headband. And I feel like it was, this was a, it has nothing to do with us, obviously. But I just felt like a little hug when she called it her murder headband. What'd she call it? <laughs> she named her headband. I think today. she called it a murder headband. Yeah, We're I like, appreciate that. This is that. my like murder headband. She said something like that. <laughs> I love a murder headband. We love a themed so, headband on this show. We love it. So Alan comes in and is like, guess what? It failed. And so then it cuts back to Peter saying, I'm a faithful to the end. And I want to be part of winning this the right way. There's no way in the world I could betray my team. Like looking into Bergie's eyes, looking into Trishel's eyes. I've given them my word. Like I can't. There's no way I could do that. I'm like looking into Trishel's eyes. You know what Jesus. I look into when I... That's it. When I look into Michelle's, I mean, Trishel's eyes, I am not thinking like this sweet lady who's put her trust in me. I just see like someone who's ready to call the manager on me. Girl, you look into Trishel's eyes, you just like fall into a coma like the people in Awakenings, you know? <laughs> I, don't, I don't imagine anybody's ever looked into Trishel's eyes and come out of it okay. Okay, there's nothing in there. It's like looking into such a depth of nothing that you just, your brain fumbles the ball. You know what, what I is mean? This? Back to football. An is this like Angela's ashes? What's going on here? Let's like relax, okay? You guys are not like poverty stricken, you know, like trying Angela's to make it through ashes. the day. <laughs> I've never even read it. Is that what it's about? Is Angela's ashes about Michelle? <laughs> I just feel like it's a book about like tough times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not like, you know what, it's not like in America. Remember that movie where the guy's like, I just have to throw this, I have to win this carnival game to win money for my family. And the kids yes, are like, Daddy, remember, stop yeah. it. Stop it, yeah. Daddy. What New York gimmick, and I'm going to make it by winning this carnival game. Daddy, don't go through our money, Daddy. And he's like, I've got to. It's like, it's not like that. Yeah, it's not like that. And also, you are you don't win a game of morals. This game is about fucking traitor, traitoring and murdering, okay? You need to do it. And what do you think is going to happen when there's only a few of you left? You need these people dead. Nobody wants to trust Trishel and Bergy. What are you, an idiot? Yeah, oh Trishel. So, um, Parvati goes, what a dummy. I guess he doesn't want to win that badly. Harumph! And so Alan's like, well, things have gone from bad to a lot. Lot worse for you this evening. There will be no murder tonight, and everyone will be turned up at breakfast tomorrow unmurdered. I love that Phaedra's giving her such shit. She's like, okay, Parvate. She's like, I know, I know. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, you suck. And she's like, I know, it's not a good look for me, okay? She goes, this could be your very last meal, Parvate. She's like, I'm gonna, Phaedra. <laughs> The game continues for the traitors, because once again, let me remind everyone, 
There was no murder. Mm, there has been no murder. And Phaedra is like, oh, I'm sorry, Private A. And she goes, well, it turns out the bachelor is not seducible. And she's like, well, her fault, you know, basically. So she's devastated. But this is what happens when a traitor's back is against the wall. I will rise from the ashes. She's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, Parvate. Yeah, you may rise from the ashes, but the producers are going to just throw in some bullshit ceremony that keeps your ashes down in the ashes. So Angela's she's ashes, really if you bad. Will. <laughs> Angela's ashes. I will rise from Angela's ashes. <laughs> <laughs> Angela's Ashes famously was about a family that went onto a reality show where they betray each other, right? <laughs> <laughs> One of the most famous lines from Angela's Ashes was, Oh my God, like, what if, like, my boyfriend is, like, sent home, like? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did. I do remember there was a movie of Angela's Ashes, and I remember there was, like, a really climactic moment where they said, Not my Burgalicious. <laughs> <laughs> This is about Frank McCourt's early life in Limerick, Ireland. Oh. Oh. It also includes his struggles with poverty and his father's alcoholism. Mm. <laughs> it's a real joy-filled book. Yeah, it was comedy of the year. That was great. I actually really want I remember my mom read it. It was like, Ben, I read Angela's Ashes. It is absolutely wonderful, and you should read it. And I've always felt guilt that I never read it. because my mom You were like, Mom, hold so on. Highly. I'm going to finish Dune first. <laughs> <laughs> back, in, back in kindergarten when Ben started Dune. I'm on a theme of like reading books about sand and ashes. If it's a small particle, I'm going to read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I keep um, hitting the mouse in my notes and it takes me to the previous page. I'm so sorry. Um, oh my God. And guess what? I just hit a line of Phaedra saying, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Parvate. <laughs> it's time. You know what's the worst is when you are shopping online and you're so excited for everything in your cart and then you look and everything's going to arrive in like five weeks and you're like, why am I even doing this? And you just give up. I hate that. Don't you, Ronnie? Oh my God. I hate that. And also when it's so expensive. I mean, listen, shipping can make or break a sale. And as your business grows, ShipStation can help optimize how you ship your orders so you can stay competitive while you scale up. ShipStation is really great for all of this stuff. They've got a free trial and quick setup. It's really easy to try things out before you commit or get started right away. Their dashboard is so user-friendly. You can easily automate shipping tasks. You can manage orders in one simple dashboard. You know, one thing also that's really cool is that ShipStation has enterprise solutions that reduce warehouse costs and improve profitability. And like, as your business grows, you can really just save thousands on shipping costs because of that. ShipStation has industry-leading discounted rates from USPS, UPS, DHL, and Global Post with discounts up to 89% off USPS and UPS rates. Optimize and keep up your momentum for growth with ShipStation. Use promo code CRAPPENS today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, promo code CRAPPENS. Looking for that perfect gift for your someone special or still figuring out that outfit for an upcoming date? Well, whatever you're looking for this Valentine's Day, Quince has you covered with luxury essentials at affordable prices you will love. Quince creates timeless essentials that never go out of style. You'll have them in your closet forever. For you or someone special, Quince has all the must-haves like 100% Mongolian cashmere crew neck sweaters from $50, 100% leather jackets, and even fine jewelry. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. I love that. I got the cutest jacket from, well, I guess I should say most handsome. It's both. It's cute and it's handsome. Jacket from Quince. I wear it all the time, and I loved it so much that I went and got my dad one, too. And he looks very cute and handsome as well. Well, that's adorable. Give yourself or others the gift of luxury this Valentine's Day with Quince. Go to quince.com slash crappens for free shipping on your order and 365-day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash crappens to get free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash crappens. Time for a commercial. It's time for a crappens commercial. Okay, so now we go to back breakfast, and um, there's no murder. So now is the part where everybody comes in one by one to breakfast and pretends that they're very happy to see each other, which I mean. Yeah. 
So Bergy and Phaedra come in first, and he's like, wow, first one's in. And Phaedra's like, ah, snap. This is the part where she just sort of says generic things because she doesn't want to be commit to any sort of statement about anything. And Bergy's like, yeah, we get to watch everyone else. She's like, yeah, where where do you want to sit? He's like, let's go to the end so we can watch everyone. She's like, oh, yeah. Duh. And she's, she, she, I'm like now getting way too excited right now. I need to like calm down. Take a breath, Ben. You are podcasting. Phaedra, how did you notice that she was making so many faces this episode? <laughs> like she was like going through every single emoji well, in her she phone does. and like, yeah, right. That was like she a was making a lot of faces. Of this is what I call this part where Phaedra starts looking guilty with food. <laughs> Phaedra, I think Phaedra looks the guiltiest whenever there's food around. I mean, obviously, there was the boiled egg, boiled egg, <laughs> boiled egg. And then there was the, um, I'm going to have this. What, you, what was it? She's like, I want this ham. Like, I don't know. There was something else yeah. that she was talking about. And then today, she acted really funny around food, too. Um, but yeah, also, the- she kind of, Bergie's too much of a dum dumb to pick up on this. But he's like, well, well, I don't think they're going to murder Kate. So I'm thinking maybe it's going to be P- Peter, Trishel, or John. And she's like, oh, so you think they're going to break up your crew? Because you are like a gang. And he's like, yeah, we are. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't a compliment, Bergie. Okay. I, I feel like anybody else would have been like, uh oh, Phaedra wants me out. I'm going to get her. Yeah, I was actually a little surprised she didn't ping any radars by by sort of saying something kind of dismissive about the crew. So then Shrey, Kate, and MJ are next to come in, and Shrey, um, Shrey still has no idea what's going on. <laughs> she she's like, "Wow, uh, Macy's looks a little different this morning." It's like you're not at the mall, Shrey. <laughs> She's like, yeah, so um, we finally got out of Trader. So is now where we spend the Wheel of Fortune? (laughs) (laughs) Do I get to buy a vowel now? (laughs) So um, Bergie's like, well, that felt really good. You got ease? (laughs) You got ease? I've got ease in my house. You got ease? Uh, So Bergie's saying how... um, He's like, yeah, we all thought Dan was in our group. Like, we all thought Dan in our group, which is not a gang, was like, was a traitor. And our number two was poverty. And then after that, we have like no idea. So we're back to square one after that. And I'm like, why? Like, I just, what I expected was going to happen this episode was, was for poverty to say, okay, you got Dan, you got Dan out. Why are, why are you guys still suspecting me? Like, why, like, this is actually so wrong. Is it because I'm a woman or something like that? Like, you found a traitor. Why am I still a traitor? You already got the, you already rooted some. Why, this why is not? Misogyny. Do it. How do dare it. you? Do it, you know? <laughs> no. And if anything, I would have said, you know what? You guys are all excited because you, you routed, no, we are all excited because we routed out a traitor. And the only one who didn't vote for the traitor was actually Peter. And he's still pressing on me, and he didn't even vote for the traitor, so I think that's suspicious. She should have said that. Yeah, next thing you know, Peter's going to try and take away a woman's right to vote, and I will not stand (laughs) for it. Use whatever you can. Do it. (laughs) Well, uh, don't encourage that. It's terrible. So, um, unless it is really the case, in which case, get in. So then um, Bergie is trying to talk it all through. And Kate's like, oh, my God, just one at a time, please. We're, like, literally here forever, okay? Just <laughs> less of you, okay? Less of you, more pancakes. <laughs> what I would prefer <laughs> right now. So um, Parvati is really worried about breakfast. And uh, she says she's uh, – Peter's going to – Say that he was. She's worried that Peter's gonna say that he was that the traders tried to recruit him, um, and she's worried about what how he's gonna use that information. Yes, and he doesn't, which is kind of shocking. So Peter comes in with John, and um, everyone's like, "Wow!" Because you know that's it, that this part does get kind of old. Where one by one they walk into breakfast, and everybody's like, "Oh my god, thank God, it's John." It's John, everybody. <laughs> um, and it's like a good solid 20 minutes. It feels like 20 minutes of that. So Peter and John come in next. And Peter is acting so suspicious, but doesn't say anything. And Parvati is also acting suspicious because she's Parvati. And I think that's the only way she knows how to act. I mean, mm-hmm. every time they cut to Parvati, even if it's just like, oh, look, gang, today we're not going to play a game. We're just going to go fly a kite. And then it cuts to Parvati. And she's like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, <are you? laughs> like, tone it down, lady. 
Yeah, I mean, I know you're trying to be like Blair Waldorf, but you've got to like, you got if Blair Waldorf did not act like this. You got to like reel it in, okay? You are trying to not look suspicious, and all you're doing is squinting at everyone as if you're like trying to find out what they were doing at 3 p.m. yesterday. Like you just have to like chill, chill yeah. property. So she's not chill, uh, but neither is Peter. And Peter like comes in like, <laughs> it's like shaking. Like, like he's, yeah. I don't know what his deal is. He looks like he found a, you know, dime bag in the back or whatever. And he's I know. Kind of guilty about it. I don't know what his deal is, but he's like <laughs> sweating, looking around. So um, he's like, I believe that Parvati's a traitor and she's the one who gave me that recruitment letter. And I've been aggressive on her, but guess what? I'm not letting up on her whatsoever. <laughs> you know, the, the truth was that it was Par- Parvati, because she's been so played the social game so wrong and, and she acted so suspicious of everyone. She really wasn't in a place where she could have said, Peter, are you okay? You look like you're squirming. Um, because then everyone would be like, see, that's poverty as a traitor. Like it would have been up to Phaedra to do that, but Phaedra's never going to do that. So he really got away with it being so nervous because no one else picked up on it. It was just shocking. Yeah. Well, also the other people are always accusing people of, over the smallest thing, why don't, they just don't accuse Peter because they're like, oh my God, Peter's like the leader of the faithful. So it really is we're, gross. I love this show that Peter is faithful, but we're acting like he's somehow a traitor. Like, how come they didn't suspect him? That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's like they it's like they can figure out that he's actually faithful, but why do you trust him so much? He's actually like doing the best job he could possibly be doing as a faithful and we're mad at him. Kind of, but I don't think so. I just think he's with a bunch of dum-dums because he's acting so suspiciously. But I can't yeah. believe nobody's not like, oh, my God, Peter's like literally sweating buckets right now at the table. <laughs> he was. No one was picking up on it. So now they're waiting. Now it's down to, to uh, Trishel or Kevin, which one of them is going to get murdered. And um, Bergy thinks it's going to be Trishel and CT thinks it could be half and half. But then guess what? Kevin and Trishel walk in together, which means that no one was murdered, which means... MJ was like, well, everyone came back, so that means that one person, like, someone was recruited. That's what that means. And uh, at this point, I'm hoping they would look at Peter, who's sitting there, like, water shaking in his hand, like Bethany Frankel in that <laughs> one really scene. Is. But no, of course not. No. <laughs> he really is. Um, so, Berg is like, yeah, because there was a recruitment, that means there's not a murder. Did you mean murder? <laughs> so then... Um, Parvati and Peter are doing this stare down thing. And um, she's like, why isn't he saying anything about the recruitment? What is his game here? I'm going to do this to, I'm going to do this to take all the heat off myself. I'm going to say things like, Peter, why do you look like that? I mean, she even talks to people like with the Disney villain voice. I know. Like later when she walks in, she's like, oh, I guess so the good people are sitting around talking to each other <laughs> so the bad people can say anything. But aren't you all goody two shoes? Anybody want to loan me their voice for a pair of legs? <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, could you um, stop talking like Ursula? That's not going to help your case. You know, how about this uh poverty could you stop asking if anyone has dalmatians that's not going to help you right now okay get me those puppies so okay. she says she says well peter d- doesn't say a word about the recruitment so if peter's going to try to hold on to this recruitment that he turned down then i can manipulate him like cut to tomorrow peter walking in with the headband on and they're like guys what's going on with peter he's like i fell into a trap uh-huh. headband trap yeah the headband trap. <laughs> he was manipulated by poverty. <laughs> so Alan version. comes in and um, he's like, hello, my little rogues and knaves. So guys, guess what? You can figure it out on your own. What's happened here? But first, I have a philosophical question for you. What's more annoying? A band on your head or a band that's stuck in your head? <laughs> Shop like a billionaire. Temu, temu. Anybody? <laughs> if a reality star falls in the forest and there's no one there to hear it, do they make a sound? Well, we're about to find out. In the case of Larsa Pippin, the sound is like, <laughs> like, 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 XYZ. Like timber like. like. XYZ. Ouch. Like. like. Like I've fallen and I can't get up like. That tree almost fell on my head like. 
<laughs> in other news, lots of people and fell over in the woods. So it's very, it's very tragic. Sandra speaks for us all when she goes, "Oh no, this means we're going to be running around in the woods." <laughs> I, I love that Sandra just shows up and says the most obvious shit, and then everybody acts like she's the second coming of Einstein. It is hilarious. <laughs> Later in the episode, stick around, everybody, because Sandra is going to teach people what numbers mean. Okay, no. Just... Well, it's a shame that you haven't really seen Sandra in her prime because she was so ex in the seasons that she won of Survivor. She was just so excellent, and so hilarious. I remember one season she like hid behind a bush and just like eavesdropped, and I just <laughs> it was just if you could just watching Sandra like, eavesdrop is like she's like the most eavesdroppy person. She's literally like my old edition of Clue that I had, where it was like Mrs. White, and it was like Mrs. White listening in, all exaggerated on the card, and that's like what Sandra does. And this, it's yeah. so good. I, I I want more classic Sandra in this season. Well, she's she's really good in this. Actually, they, she hasn't had a lot of screen time, but I think she's going to last a long time. I think that yeah. she's one of those players that is going to make it to the finals, and you're just going to have to wait until the second half and all the dumb people are done sucking all the air out of the room and gone. <laughs> that you start seeing more of her because that this episode yeah. when she started teaching people what numbers mean with pool balls, I was dying laughing. <laughs> They're like, what? She goes, because if you got five here, then you got two, two there. Five is more than two. They're like, oh. That being said, Sandra's theories have all been incorrect all season long. So that's fine. <laughs> that's true. Although she okay, got well, she we'll one get there. in we'll there. Get that there. was okay. We'll get there. So Parvati's like, so everyone. I'm facial, by the way. I'm going to do my, I'm going to do a little red, um, red light, <laughs> red light therapy while we do this recap. My skin hurts. Go ahead, Ben. <laughs> So everyone who got recruited, who got recruited here, come on, fess up everyone who got recruited. Not me. I'm definitely not a traitor. I'm not a traitor whatsoever. I might be squinting at you, but I'm not a traitor. And they're like, okay, Parvati. She says, is it you, Peter? Is it you? Yeah, she is really acting very guilty. And so she goes, Peter, are you the traitor? And he's like, we shall see. Ha ha. ha I mean, ha ha. And Kate's like, hey, let's not judge our faithfuls, okay? Maybe maybe they actually said no thank you, you know? There are such a thing as non-thirsty people in the world. I've never met one. I've never, certainly never seen one on this channel, but they exist, I'm sure. <laughs> and Bergie's like, yeah, like maybe someone got a letter last night and they, and they denied it. I mean, and they're just like not saying it. Maybe, maybe someone did. So Parvati's like, okay, everyone, raise your hand if you got the letter. Anybody? Hmm. <laughs> Somebody's lying. Hmm. If I were a traitor, I'd know exactly who got it. But I'm not a traitor whatsoever. I've never been inside that turret. Not a traitor. So then Peter's like, "Well, I mean, I didn't get the, I didn't get murdered. So I guess that means I'm not a traitor, right, Parvati?" She says, "Well, uh, oh, he says, and now that means you're not a traitor too." Wait, what did he say? He said, Parvati, I guess this means I'm not a traitor if I'm still here. I'm like, actually, it means you're more likely to be a traitor, you dumb dumb. Why <laughs> Why does that exonerate you? And Parvati goes, well, that's a change of tune. Now you're saying I'm... Oh, wait, no, no. Peter said... I got confused on this. No, part. no, I, no. I think that Peter said that Parvati was not a traitor. And because okay, Parvati sense. was like, oh, well, that's a change of tune. Now you're saying, I'm not a traitor. What's up with that? Maybe I am a traitor, Peter. It's like, Parvati, stop that. And he's like, well, the fact that I'm still, isn't that, doesn't that mean that you're not a traitor? Because if you were a traitor, you would have killed me. She goes, I know you've been gunning for me for a very long time, Peter. That's a big change of heart. That heart is so big, I'm going to put a headband on it, except it'll be called a heart band. <laughs> And um, he's just kind of giving her this smug little look, you know. And um, she's like, oh, my God, I'm done with his smug little smile looking at me like he's got it all figured out. Today, something just fell downstairs. I'm not sure what it is. I'm blaming the dog. Today. It's Parvati. <laughs> Parvati's in your house, Ronnie. The traitor is in your house. Wouldn't be surprised. It's really windy. It blew down the fence outside. So it's, a lot of things are being blown down. I don't know how that happened inside, but the wind is strong. Y'all. The Lord is strong is what I'm saying. So anyway, she's pissed at his smug little face. And I agree with her. I'm so ready to see his ass get kicked off today. And I'm so excited he's going to get kicked off. Surely nothing's going to happen to fuck this up, right? And this is where she says, today I've got my predatory headband on and I'm coming for that bachelor. <laughs> 
<laughs> so now Peter takes his little crew of five to the bar to talk. And he's like, guys, this has to be quick. Okay. Okay. This is going to be shocking. Please don't doubt me. Please trust. Now, look, I'm going to tell the, I'm going to tell this to the doll first and practice. So I'm more confident telling you. I'm not a doll. I'm a real person. That's Trishel, bro. Okay, whatever. <laughs> okay. First, before I announce this, I just want to share with this hat stand that has a beret on it. Like, that's me. I'm still Trishel. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay, anybody? I'm going to practice on this chocolate croissant. Why are you talking to a chocolate croissant? Oh, my God, you guys. The, the doll's talking. The doll is talking. <laughs> The doll hat stand with the bows on it's talking, guys. The traitor's all over us. <laughs> okay, so he tells them they tried to recruit him. But guys, I'm going to be with the faithfuls until the end. Right. He goes, I promise you, I didn't want to say anything. But like tonight, we have to banish poverty. And after we banish poverty, it's going to be revealed that she's a traitor. So that's two traitors in the room. And so then Phaedra walks in, and Brigitte's like, oh, hey, what's going on, Phaedra? What's going on? <laughs> and he's like, and Peter goes, um, one second, Phaedra, can you give us a minute? Thank you so much. I'm like, oh, fuck yourself, Peter. Yeah, he's the worst. And she just leaves, but she's like, Peter and his pals, the Peter pals, they have this <laughs> secret meaning. <laughs> I love Peter I love pals. her off the cuff naming and then she just sticks with it the rest of the time because i mean this I'm, is a woman with 90 million businesses and she really just tries to brand that the whole uh, the rest of the episode she's like hmm what do we think about the peter pals you know what i honestly like peter pals because i'm so sick of on big brother every time people decide to start an alliance like guys we got to name our alliance how about this the machine gun carrying total people <laughs> and you're like what <laughs> Murdering Mastiff's motorboats. Mm. The Indiana Jones is in the temple of Big Brother Doom. Oh. <laughs> and then they refer to that all season long. Yeah. When, uh, when uh, what those buns was on, that was the Renegades. <sighs> oh, God, that was the Mavericks, worst. The what was the other? I mean, there have been so many all-guy alliances on Big Brother, but, oh. You know, my favorite one was, this is a real throwback. There was a guy named Marvin, I think on season five, who's like, let's call our alliance the Santa Monica Van Boys. Because I think they rode in a van production move, took them from a hotel in Santa Monica to like the, the studios. <laughs> so their alliance was the Santa Monica Van Boys. Oh my just, gosh. It's always stuck with me. So um, Pedro goes to the billiard room <laughs> where the ladies are starting to form their own alliance. This is the Bravo people mostly. So it's yes. all the Bravo people, I think. And, so, and did you notice? Sorry to interrupt. Did you notice that they had put like a pillow by the door? So it's like anytime an outsider came in, it would knock over the pillow. It was like some sort of like warning <laughs> pillow. I don't know how it would have. I don't know what sort of advance notice it gave them, but they definitely had some sort of system set up that every time someone came in the door, a little pillow fell over. You're literally in a house where everything makes noise. <laughs> There is nothing in this house that doesn't make noise. And you found the pillow? <laughs> the pillows, you're a warning? You're warning that someone's walking in on you? Lean a book. You're in a library. Take a book. Lean it up against the door. It would be pushed down if somebody came in. A pillow? <laughs> I know. So this is so The Bachelor's idea. Guys, put a pillow there. Uh, so Phaedra comes in and she's like, I just walked in and they said, could you not come in? We need to have privacy. So MJ goes, who said that, Peter? I need to go over there. So then MJ, she can get to the bottom of this, guys. Don't you worry. <laughs> so she's going to go try. So Trish, back in the other meeting, Trishel's like, okay, this is what I wanted to do. I'm like, I think we should keep Parvati because she's a wounded bird, you know. But Phaedra has all those Bravo people, you guys. Phaedra's the one. Now, she's finally on to something, right? This yeah. is like one time she's finally on to it, and nobody's going to listen to her. <laughs> I know, because she she used up all her credibility with Peppermint. So now, like, I was like, yeah, 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 Trishel, whatever. And Trishel is, you know, her theory is, again, that, like, Dan had to give out a name, so he had to give out another traitor to save himself, and he did, and no one's listening. So then uh, Peter's like, trust me, trust me. Here's the plan. Okay, here's the plan. We have to banish Poverty tonight. Now, as it happens, they're going to hit success no matter which way they go. Um, but uh, I uh, I just, I'm like mad. I'm like really mad that they're like doing so well right now. Yeah. 
Nationwide, 100 million people, including 28 million kids, do not live within a 10-minute walk to a park. Let's take it outside. A new podcast series from the Sierra Club will explore the nature all around us and the people working to protect it and ensure access for all. We hope you'll join us. For more information about Let's Take It Outside, visit sierraclub.org slash podcasts. The shoes, here comes one right now. Okay, so Peter's like, trust me, guys, it's Parvati. So then MJ comes in, and she's trying to sneak in and listen. And then um, she just knocks. She just goes in. She's like, knock, knock. And Peter's like, oh, oh, MJ, MJ, sorry. Can we uh, can we have a minute? I mean, what are these, what morons these people are? Who does this? You are MJ- not the majority of the house. You guys can't <laughs> act like this. And MJ goes, Give you one minute of privacy because... And MJ's mm-hmm. standing there so awkwardly. She's sort of like in the corner all the way across from them. And she's just sort of like has this stance. And she's wearing these big jeans that are like Jesus. flaring out. And this like strange shirt. And like I've seen this image of her all over Twitter. Of her just sort of standing there. I think she's getting memed at the moment, right? Like I think she's being used in all these different things. Yeah, because she looks so awkward. My favorite one was <laughs> where they put her side by side with... Monica's mother from Real Housewives of Salt Lake City when she was like, well, have fun walking home, mother. She's like, you're going to make me walk home? She's like, yes! And she just like leaves her standing there all pathetic. <laughs> That's been my favorite MJ meme. Oh, so I'm just like, so give you privacy because... And Bernie goes, you're, you're, uh, you're going to love our plan. And, and Kevin's like, yeah, you're going to love this because... Um, uh, Shh, don't say it in front of MJ. Don't say it in front of MJ. This, this is only a faithful meeting, not an MJ meeting. Peter, you fucking idiot. <laughs> She's like, but I, I don't want to be left out of something. And Peter's like, no, 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 you won't. I promise you. I promise you. So you're leaving her out right now, right this very second. So she just kind of backs out all sad. Um, so then she runs down the hallway to report back. She goes, um, they said to leave guys. And they're like, <laughs> Peter. She goes, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. So now this makes, I have to say, I thought that Poverty is maneuvering last episode against Peter and his group. I was like, oh, this is never going to stick. But actually she planted some seeds that really have stuck. So, Sandra now is like, I think Peter is the traitor. He causes so much chaos, so much drama, and he does more harm than good. And he has an alliance of four people and a beret. So it's a numbers game. Uh, yes, which, of course, I, anybody who's anti-Peter was cheering at this, right? So yeah. she's like, okay, guys, come over here. I'm going to explain something to you at this this is a pool table. They're, they use balls. Does any do you all know what balls are? They're the opposite of squares. And people are like, okay, um, um, okay. Like but there's no head, swimming like, pool here. It's just a table. No, Did you, you don't say- swim in this. This is a game you roll balls around on on top of it. It's just do the balls. The balls float in water. Are these like beach balls? No, it's not that kind of pool. Okay. Just forget it. Let's just pretend these are, let's just, for for example's sake, let's call them balls. Okay, but they're really <laughs> boxes. All right, come, just come over here. Just, just try and pay attention, okay? Okay. So yeah, CT yeah. goes, I really like where this is going. Oh, by the way, I'm stupid because I listened to a commenter who told me incorrectly, commenter, how dare you come into my home and tell me incorrect things that then I wander all over the world spreading these things. And this thing that you told me that was incorrect was that CT is in fact not a Bostonian. So I looked it up and it said that he was from Brooklyn, but it turns out he was born in Brooklyn, but grew up in Boston. So Ben, go back. We're all, we're all right. You're all right. You were correct. I corrected you in the beginning and I was off course. So I apologize, everybody. I mean, I always thought he was from Bostonian, but like you were, it's not your fault because it says it that he's from Brooklyn, uh, but he has a thick Boston accent. He's very Boston y, although I think he's maybe not even from Boston, but maybe in the Boston region. Either way, uh, there was a lot of misinformation out there. And honestly, I'm surprised that CT is not a traitor at this point, given how slippery his geographical location is. <laughs> no kidding. So CT's like, oh my God, pool balls? I love where this is going. So Sandra. <laughs> lays out her strategy with the balls. She's like, okay, this ball is going to be John. This ball is going to be Kevin. This 
Is that? I'm sorry. There's a lot of there's a lot of people. Are we balls now? Why do we all look so similar? Can we just wear different T-shirts? All right, we're gonna have to start this from the top because CT just hit the balls with his cue. Okay, we're not actually playing Can't help pool. It. Listen, you okay. put a sport in front of me. I'm gonna play it. Yeah, but we're not playing billiards or pool right now. I'm trying to do a demonstration with the pool balls. I'm a player. What can I say? So, you know what? You, you don't want me to play? Don't, don't give me a game. I mean, what the hell? Okay. Well, what? how about this? Okay, I'm going to take the balls off the pool table so they're no longer a game. They're just balls in an isolated space. Oh, you just Now you're just kicking them. They're not soccer balls. <laughs> you don't have to kick them into the fireplace. Oh, yeah? Then how come I just got a point? So, you know, you didn't actually get up. No, you didn't get holding the pillow does not mean you got a point. Could you put that back against the door, please? All right. Just listen. OK, so this is us, right? So here's my theory. So if the traders is here, then we're screwed, right? Because listen, there's this many of them. This is more balls than over here. There's this many balls. See all balls. Do you understand? Do you understand? These are called numbers. Okay, it's like, oh, my God, watching people try and understand numbers for the first time in their lives it's one of the most fascinating things i've ever seen in my life <laughs> kate's like mm, this theory doesn't hold water but it's hilarious so i'm just gonna say uh-huh and go along with it just because i don't really give a fuck and <laughs> santa's like okay I was laughing so hard she literally put like let's say five balls over here and then three balls over on the other side she's like see with these balls there's more balls here and they're like oh <laughs> but this, by the way, this theory was was tenuous at best, but she spoke with such conviction that everyone's like, has to be. <laughs> and of course, Parvati and Phaedra are not going to challenge it. They're like, yes, wow, you're speaking the truth, Sandra. Well, I think what she was saying may, was very simple. She was saying, listen, we have more people than they have. They think they're in control, but we're actually in control. We have more people than them, so we right. can do whatever we want. Like, they're keeping us out of their room or whatever, but we can vote them out. And people, they're like, no, we can't. They're faithful. She's <laughs> like, this is what numbers mean. This is a majority. <laughs> and they're like, huh? <laughs> Dead. This is why my knowledge of Survivor helps me because I'm able to show everyone how the numbers look and they look like pool balls, you know? And that's how I figured it out. And I'm hoping they're able to see exactly what I show them because the leftovers have to prevail. And that's that's we that's us. We're the leftovers because we're not part of the most faithful of the faithful. Also, we're the leftovers because I'm pretty sure that CT has a pancake in his pocket from this morning. <laughs> so they're basically like, what? I don't get it. And she's like, listen, the more balls win. So the, we're the more balls. So let's kill this other ball. This ball's name is Peter. It's like, yeah, let's kill Peter. It's like, okay, that's all I needed to say in the end. And Kate's like, oh my God, this is the best thing I've ever experienced. <laughs> and probably is like, oh, and by the way, don't forget, Peter came for me at breakfast and said that suddenly I'm not a traitor now. Can you believe he says I'm not a traitor? What are you he doing? Was- <laughs> what? Well, she was so she was like, see, he's changing his story. Isn't that crazy? Isn't it wild? He should think I'm a traitor. It's wild. Yeah. What is she doing? <laughs> okay, so just remind everybody once again that uh, you're suspected, right? So <laughs> oh. uh, she goes, okay, but the only way this works is if everybody votes against Peter. And Phaedra's like, okay, you voting for Peter. You voting for Peter. Peter, I shouldn't have to tell you who you, you all should be able to answer this by now. You, who are you voting for? Um, Kate Jackson. No, <laughs> Kate Jackson. <laughs> Peter, you are voting for Peter. Uh, I'm gonna vote for this pancake in my pocket. No, no, that's not an eligible vote. If you want to throw Perot! it at Peter, no, it's not, it's not a vote in the '80s for a president. You fucking morons. So now John and Peter are sitting there at the bar together. And John's like, do you think that poverty is feeling a bit vulnerable? And he's like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, uh, It's like, uh, Peter, could you stop trembling for one moment and not looking as guilty? <laughs> so uh, Peter, poverty is very happy. She's like, Peter thinks that he is on his high horse and he thinks he's running this show. And I cannot wait to watch that smug, headbandless smile fall off his lips when he gets banished. I am going to be dancing all the way to the turret. Which, when she said that, I was like, something's going to go wrong. 
You only right, say this that. This is too easy. Like, this this too is easy. yeah. This is too easy, and it's it's also too early in the episode to know exactly what's going to go down, right? Yeah. So now it's time for my favorite part, the challenge, which I never understand. So now they go out to the forest, and they basically have to get in teams of two and start running all over the place and finding shit. Which, of course, I immediately tune out. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, my brain just doesn't work like that. I, I see this all this running around, and I just get very tired. I'm an empath when it comes to physical things like emotionally mm. i don't care but physically if i see somebody else running i get very tired or my knees hurt or if i see somebody lifting something heavy i'm like oh my back and then i sit down for a while and this is just that's why i don't watch a super bowl really at the end of the day i get brain damage by proxy and when i watch this game i just get very tired i i get on my phone yeah um this one uh, the gist of this challenge, we won't, we won't, we don't have to get too much into it, but basically they have to pair up and Phaedra and CT pair up, which, you know, the internet loves because they're like, we ship them. Um, and they have to go through the forest and there's a question. They, they, they're going to keep on, um, running into like these junctures where there's questions and you can either go to the left or to the right. And if you get it wrong, you're going to get trapped. And then um, uh, if both of you get it wrong over the course of the competition, then you're both out and the money that you've collected will not be going to the, towards the, the prize pot. The thing that was notable for this about me was that the first trap is like you go to get the clue and then you wind up falling into like a mucky puddle of muck. But then the second, all the subsequent traps were like if you pick up the clue and it's wrong, an enormous net <laughs> emerges from the ground and captures you with like a whole bunch of leaves and hangs you up into the trees. I was like, that's terrifying. <laughs> that shit was so funny. <laughs> also, it goes to show you what dicks people are in these situations, just socially. They're like, okay, so it's a physical thing. So if some things are worth more than other things, let's make all the losers go for the lower thing. So, John, you're a loser. You go for the thousand dollar buy. I mean, what the <laughs> hell? It was like a game of kickball team choosing or whatever but the best was uh yeah both so sheree and berkey were paired up and so um they get it they get the first question wrong but it's berkey he goes to pick up the wrong clue so he winds up falling into the muck and sheree sees it and goes oh hell no (laughs) she's like like, i can't believe this would happen (laughs) when we're going to yogurt land it's like you're not going to yogurt land (laughs) oh Okay, so um, let's see. The race. They're racing around looking for stuff. Peter and Trishel, uh, who were like, we're going for the big, th- the biggest thing because we're like the strongest. And Peter's the first out, which I liked. I know. I love that. And then, um, yeah, Bergie and Sheree, you said. So then Phaedra and CT get one wrong. And C- she's like, you go get that clue. And he's like, okay. So he goes to get it and gets caught up in the tree net thing. And she's like, oh, sorry. Bye. And she just walks away like, <laughs> extremely slowly. She's like, okay, bye. Don't rush or anything, Pedro, okay? It's just a game. By the way, um, Peter losing first it should have that should have been um, that should have been material that Phaedra could have I mean uh, poverty could have used to say, look, he allegedly, you know, he allegedly went out first by accident, but he's he, I think he's a traitor. He did it on purpose, even though a traitor has no motivation to sabotage the challenge, which is stupid. That's the stupidest part about the show, and I like the idea that like if the challenge doesn't succeed that the shields are nullified. But either way, there's a bunch of dum-dums and Phaedra could have, I mean, Parvati could have totally used that against Peter and she didn't. Yeah. So then um, they're now down three teams, okay? And Sheree has been caught in the tree net thing. So there's not much money left, basically. And so Phaedra's wandering around terrified of the woods. And then Kate, of course, is jealous of the people in the nets. She's like, it's basically like a hammock. <laughs> it's basically like the reality show I want to be in, which is just sit and be relaxed and not around people. That'd be great. <sighs> okay, so then so the- Trishel and uh, Trishel's looking around and just trying to figure out these clues. And one of the clues, I thought this was tricky because there's a Latin phrase that was written in the kitchen. Keep your friends close or keep your enemies close, which is the right answer. Well, 
Sounds like it would be keep your enemies close, right? Duh, because no. keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer. But if there's only one... I wasn't sure if the game was... I actually also thought it was going to be keep your enemies close because I thought the game... I thought they were being tricky because the phrase is keep your friends close and your enemies closer. So I thought the game was saying like... I thought it was going to be like keep your enemies close and your friends far... I don't know. I thought it was just being clever, but it and much was not your friends. Clever. And your friends? You murder! So either way, like ultimately the, the the two teams that win that get all the way to the end are John and Parvati and then Kevin and Sandra. And um they they get it correct and John's like, Parvati, you're the triumphant warrior, the ultimate survivor, the lady of the headband, and now you shall be the lady of the land. I now present to you the Duchess of Scotland. Parvati Shallow. <sighs> Okay, so Kevin and Sandra end up winning this one, and um, they're faster. Yeah, they're they the fastest. The faster they get, ones. they both get shields. And it was very tricky because it, they made it look <laughs> like they got there after. You know, tricky editing. Right. I'm telling you every mm-hmm. time, every time, I fall for it every time. Okay, so Parvati's like, well, we didn't get the shield, but thankfully Peter didn't get it either. I can't wait to murder him, which will definitely be happening tonight. When he gets murdered, because he will definitely not be safe. There's nothing that will happen if he doesn't get voted out at the round table, which will definitely be happening, too. Yeah. Hello there. This is a two-part recap, okay? This is the end of part one. So thank you so much for listening to this. Uh, just come back a little later for part two. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no less namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Chadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch. It's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Crappens ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com slash survey. From Wondery, this is Black History for Real. I'm Francesca Ramsey. And I'm Conscious Lee. What do most (laughs) people think about when they hear the words Black History? Rosa Parks, Reconstruction, MLK, February, Black History Month. Exactly, exactly. There are so many stories of Black History that we just are not really talking about or thinking about, especially outside of February. And we are about to flip the script on all of that. Because on this show, you're going to hear a little less. In August 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And a little bit more. She is a heroine to some. As a fighter for black rights, she is a villain to others. Follow Black History for Real on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. Listen everywhere on February 5th, or you can listen early and ad-free on Wondery Plus starting January 29th. Join Wondery Plus on the Wondery app or on Apple Podcasts. Academy is a new scripted podcast that follows Ava Richards, played by HBO's Industries, Myhala Herald, a brilliant scholarship student who has to quickly adapt to her newfound eat-or-be-eaten world. 
Ava's ambitions take hold and her small town values break in hopes of becoming the first scholarship student to make the list. Bishop Gray's all coveted academic top 10, curated by the headmaster himself. But after realizing she has no chance at the list on her own, she reluctantly accepts an invitation to a secret underground society that pulls the strings on campus life and academic success. If she bends to their will, she'll have everything she's ever dreamed of. But at what cost? Academy takes you into the world of a cutthroat private school where power, money, and sex collide in a game of life and death. Follow Academy on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge all episodes of Academy early and ad-free right now by joining Wondery Plus.